I find it powerful for Mary Noel to be present here and part of what draws me here uh, is that just given the state of polarization in our country on so many issues, uh, there's a particularly meaningful gospel approach to that uh, stalemate by, as I try to embrace it for myself, of putting all that I am and all that's been entrusted to me at the foot of the cross, um, at the people who are most vulnerable here at the border. Jesus was always going to the margins, always reaching out to the people who needed to be healed or to be drawn back in. Um, and the idea of literally and figuratively washing the feet of people who have suffered. Our steady presence as a Marinol community is able to provide some stability um, amidst a tremendous amount of movement and transition, both amongst the folks who are coming, uh, seeking safety in the US, and among the people who come to try to be helpful. So for me, um, as a Mary Nolay missioner, I feel like the call is to both that direct service and accompaniment and using the skills that we have, mine happen to be legal skills, uh, and then also just building that community and helping people reflect and bring what they experience here back into their lives. Part of the gift of being here with Mary Nolay missioners is that I have the flexibility to be present and really discern about where are their needs that are unmet without having to sort of think about you know, billable hours and that kind of thing. Right now, we're actually just embarking on formalizing that so that I will be visiting the shelters and doing some general legal orientation about all of these complex legal components that people have to deal with, um, and then identifying people that we can represent in a way that is meaningful for them and feasible for us. So, uh, be spending time visiting with the new guests as they arrive across the Annunciation House network, which right now is three shelters, um, and building a model basically as a, a pilot pro program to then work with more of the shelters in the area. Part of the particularity here and anywhere along the border is that people are very traumatized right now. So they've experienced trauma in their home country, which has prompted them to have to leave. The journey to get here is also very difficult. People endure a lot of violence um, to get here. And then oftentimes when they come to the U.S., they're put into maximum security prisons as detention centers. So when we meet people, they're being released from those detention centers. And so it's a very deeply vulnerable time for people. So it's um, learning how to, in a trauma-informed way, uh, connect with the person, assure them that they're safe and that they are really free now to go wherever they feel they need to go, that they're not in government custody anymore. And then as I talk with each person to kind of suss out how much can they handle right now. Um, and generally that includes some information about asylum. Um, so it's always sort of the, the pastoral accompaniment and trying to figure out how much of the legal piece can they handle right now and giving them basically a summary sheet of their very essential next steps and some information to connect with legal services. I've learned a lot about how to sort of triage to give people this general information and then to spend time listening to people's stories and with an ear toward identifying people who are particularly vulnerable and have asylum claims. For example, people who maybe speak indigenous languages and would have a hard time finding an interpreter or people of the LGBTQ community. And then also listening for the stories of people who have suffered certain kinds of crimes once they've crossed into the U.S. Because once you come over the wall or around the wall, there's a, another vulnerable space um, where there are people, unfortunately, who prey on those people and they're often exhausted and um, dehydrated and disoriented. And often those people are kidnapped and taken um, for ransom. So there are special visas for people who've been through that experience in the United States. Um, and also if they've experienced human trafficking. Uh, it really, um, quite honestly, angers me that we're not implementing an organized national strategy for this to happen. It doesn't have to be this hard and it would financially be a lot more efficient to invest in welcoming people and training them to fill the jobs that we need filled than spending millions of dollars in this border industrial complex that is only getting more militarized. In Texas, it could very readily become a crime to provide assistance to people who are undocumented. Like, yes, take me. Like that would very, that would be um, something that I know that I would very readily feel would be um, 
just a, a call to live into what I profess and demonstrate that what's happening here is very, very intentional and violent.